Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a case of distal embolization during aspiration thrombectomy. The patient is a 55-year-old male smoker who has not seen a doctor in over two decades. He had a severe chest pain that lasted several hours about three days ago and has been having worsening uh, shortness of breath since then. He uh, presents to the ER with ongoing chest discomfort and frank uh, respiratory distress. Uh, in the ER, he was uh, hypertensive, he was tachycardic, and his oxygen saturation was only 82% on 100% non-rebreather. The ECG showed sinus tachycardia, and he had one to two millimeter uh, lateral ST segment elevations. Uh, he was uh, intubated, and the STEMI team was activated. On diagnostic angiogram, uh, the RCA has a chronic total occlusion uh, in its midsection. The left circumflex had only uh, minor irregularities. Uh, there were uh, numerous uh, left to right uh, septal collaterals uh, to the RCA. And the LED uh, was actually patent as well, uh, but uh, the patient had real uh, lateral ST elevations. So where is the uh, culprit lesion. Could the culprit be uh, a diagonal branch? Uh, there is an unimpressive uh, little nub uh, coming off of the proximal LED. Uh, we uh, decided to go after it. Stuck a BMW wire down there, but it just curled up against the nub and made no progress. Uh, we then tried a hydrophilic Pilot 50 wire, uh, which went through the nub, uh, but uh, it was not really clear uh, where uh, it was tracking. Uh, with a little bit of a push, uh, the Pilot 50 wire popped through and thankfully uh, appeared to be uh, selecting uh, branches. So we went ahead and gently dilated uh, the proximal part of the diagonal branch uh, with a 1.2 millimeter balloon. Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get any flow even after repeated uh, POBA uh, with 1.2 and 1.5 millimeter balloons. Uh, we were a little bit hesitant about more aggressive dilation because uh, we weren't completely sure whether we were in the lumen. Uh, we could not rule out a dissection or even uh, the wire being uh, completely uh, outside the coronary. So uh, we had to make a decision. Do we stop uh, or, or do we keep going? Uh, now, in meanwhile, the patient's ST segments are still up, uh, and uh, his blood pressure was drifting lower, and uh, is now about 95 over 70. So we did a quick uh, bedside echo using our vascular access ultrasound, uh, which actually gives a remarkably uh, clear images, and we did not see an effusion. Uh, this was only somewhat reassuring uh, that there was no perforation since there was no flow to cause an effusion in the first place, but we decided to proceed. We uh, passed a microcatheter into the vessel and a contrast injection thankfully confirmed that we were in the lumen and that this was a potentially large arborizing diagonal system uh, with uh, several branches. We went ahead and dilated the diagonal with a long uh, 2.5 by 30 millimeter balloon, uh, but flow was still sluggish. Uh, there was a, uh, appeared to be a large amount of thrombus in the vessel. So what should we do now? Uh, would aspiration thrombectomy uh, be uh, indicated in this scenario? So in general, uh, as a lot of you know, a routine aspiration thrombectomy in primary PCI is uh, no longer recommended. However, it may be considered in select scenarios, uh, such as vessels with a high thrombus burden or PCI in a thrombotic vein graph or, or highly ectatic thrombotic vessels. But even in these cases, um, the usefulness of aspiration thrombectomy uh, is uh, not well established. Now, evidence for this uh, comes from the TOTAL trial uh, that was published in 2015. Uh, there were several smaller aspiration thrombectomy trials prior to this, but TOTAL is viewed as the uh, definitive aspiration thrombectomy trial. So in total, 10,372 STEMI patients uh, were randomized to aspiration thrombectomy versus PCI alone. And the punchline was that there was no difference in MACE uh, between the two groups. 
and uh, ominously, uh, there seems to be a significant increase in stroke uh, within 30 days uh, in the thrombectomy group. So routine aspiration thrombectomy before primary PCI earns a class three uh, no benefit uh, recommendation. Uh, bailout aspiration thrombectomy in select cases has a weak class two B recommendation in that its utility uh, is still not well established. But if you do find yourself in a situation where you think aspiration thrombectomy might be useful, uh, there are several uh, uh, aspiration thrombectomy catheters at your disposal. Remember that uh, most aspiration thrombectomy catheters will require a six French guide. Uh, only the Pronto LP uh, is compatible with a five French guide. Uh, thrombectomy catheters come with the aspiration port either at the distal tip or off to the side, and both versions have utility uh, in different scenarios. Importantly, uh, remember to keep negative suction on the thrombectomy catheter until it is completely out of the patient. And this is to reduce the chance of embolization of the thromb aspirated uh, thrombus. Also, always backbleed your guide uh, to flush back any thrombus that might have separated or broken off uh, during uh, withdrawal of the thrombectomy catheter. Uh, back to our case, um, there was uh, clearly a heavy thrombus burden and uh, we have not made much progress with POBA alone. So we decided to perform uh, several aspiration thrombectomy passes and with that, uh, we were finally able to establish some flow in the uh, diagonal branch. After uh, stenting uh, with uh, two drug eluting stents, uh, we obtained a reasonable final result uh, with flow uh, restored uh, to the large uh, diagonal system. Uh, we transferred the patient to uh, the ICU um, and uh, the call team uh, started uh, to head home. In the ICU, however, uh, the uh, patient uh, became uh, progressively hypotensive. Uh, his uh, blood pressure, which had been uh, in the 100s uh, on arrival to the ICU, uh, gradually drifted down into the 80s. Uh, there was no obvious groin bleed. Uh, uh, they started uh, norepinephrine. Uh, a repeat ECG showed subtle, uh, but new uh, ST elevations in V4 through V6 uh, compared to his ECG in the ER, uh, which primarily showed ST elevations in 1 and AVL. So we uh, called the call team back. Um, none of them quite made it home and uh, took the patient back uh, to the cath lab uh, for a relook. So on a relook and geography, uh, the, uh, diagonally, uh, the diagonal was uh, thankfully uh, widely patent, um, but the distal LED uh, is now occluded. Uh, what happened? Um, in retrospect, uh, looking at the early angiograms, uh, the distal LED was actually occluded fairly early on uh, during the first case, probably from a wayward clot. Uh, the clot uh, could have uh, embolized either during withdrawal of the initial uh, angioplasty balloons or broken off uh, during uh, aspiration thrombectomy. But the occlusion is so distal, uh, it was unclear whether this is the cause of uh, the hypotension. We uh, decided to treat the LED anyway. Uh, we uh, put a wire down fairly easily and uh, performed more aspiration thrombectomy. Uh, but unfortunately, the LED remained occluded after a couple of passes uh, with the uh, thrombectomy catheter. We uh, passed a microcatheter to the distal LED to confirm that we were indeed uh, in the true lumen. Uh, the team was uh, starting to get a sense of deja vu. Didn't we uh, just do this earlier in the day? Finally, after uh, several more aspiration thrombectomy passes, uh, we were able to get the LED open. The uh, final result in both the LED and the diagonal branch were quite satisfactory, and there was a TIMI-3 flow throughout. Uh, we did place a balloon pump and uh, moved them back to the ICU. He ended up doing quite well. Uh, his uh, pressors were weaned off after a couple of days, and the balloon pump came out. Uh, he was uh, discharged home, and he did stop smoking. 
Okay, take home messages. First, uh, remember that while routine aspiration thrombectomy is no longer recommended, I find that it is still quite useful and very necessary in some settings, such as heavily thrombotic occlusions. Sometimes balloon angioplasty and even stenting uh, just aren't sufficient. Now, to reduce uh, the risk of a wayward clot, thrombus embolization, make sure you keep a negative suction on the thrombectomy catheter until it is out of the patient and allow copious bleed back uh, through your guide catheter uh, to flush out any clot that has separated or detached. But unfortunately, sometimes even when you do this, uh, you can still get uh, thrombus embolization. And so after PCI of a heavily uh, uh, thrombotic lesion, uh, look for evidence of a wayward clot that has embolized to other coronary arteries and treat if necessary. Thank you for watching.